Good afternoon, ladies. I am here to share what finally has been the completion point of this study. I know I'm about a week late, but it, I think it was a little ambitious of me to think that I was going to get the study done <laughs> in the week of Thanksgiving. Not sure what I was thinking. But anyway, here I am. It's Friday. Woohoo! We made it through the week. We made it through two weeks. God is amazing. So Father God, we just thank you for everything that you've done, all that you have given us and how you have allowed us to be able to accomplish another week in your presence. God, we ask that this word would be able to come to us and minister and to give us the that little nugget that we need to be able to push beyond the current situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you guys know we've been doing a series, I guess, on the altar. Last time it was the broken altar. This time it's just the altar. And so I wanted to present some things that we're going to be talking about. First, let's start with the key text. And that text is found in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 5 and 6. And let me read it to you. It says, and there were... Let's speak English, Tita. And there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use iron tools on them. You shall build with whole stones the altar of the Lord your God and offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. I think it said, Lord, your God, at least three times, four times throughout those two verses. So something to focus on right out the back is the fact that he's like, Lord, your God, Lord, your God. And he's kind of repeating that because it's kind of an important term. He is the Lord, our God. And we need to keep that in mind. So with that in mind, let's talk about the altar. Last time we spoke about it, we said that in Hebrew, it is mis, mis bea which means a place of sacrifice. Um, and this can be the nature of man. It can also be a physical sacrifice of an animal. Um, typically, altars are made from stone, earth, metal, brick, or natural occurring rocks. Um, they have also been known to be placed in courtyards, like in the temple or in the tabernacle. And they can also be placed in high places, like in the mountains. Like if you read in First Kings, you'll see. In fact, that's where we took our verse from last time, from Elijah. They were in a high place up in the mountains. So that verse that we took, when God said to use the uncut stones, it kind of spoke to me to the fact that, you know, sometimes God just wants the simple from us. Um, in this day and age, everything has to be pretty, everything has to be cute, everything has to be well put together in a box, neat, wrapped, and ready to go. And God is asking us to put aside that fancy, put aside that, look what everybody can see. This is what I want everyone to see. God is asking us, give us, give me the simple, give me just how it is keep it raw. Don't hide it. Don't make it what it's not. Give God all in its completion. What do I mean? Well, a lot of times, and this is for non-believers, but it can, it applies to us too, because we sometimes um, fool ourselves into thinking this way. Well, I will give myself to the Lord when I have everything together, or I'll give myself to the Lord. I've had this told to me many times when I was evangelizing, I'll come to the Lord when I stop smoking, or I'll come to the Lord when I get married, when they were shacking up, or I'll come to the Lord when I stop using drugs. And God is saying, that's not what I want. I want all of it, just the way it is. And the reason for that is, you don't have to get pretty. You don't have to make it pretty. You don't have to make it super exciting. He just wants you as you are. 
Isn't that beautiful? In a society that says, no, you have to dress up, you have to have your merf your makeup perfect, your nails perfect, mine are not perfect. Um, <laughs> in fact, tomorrow they're gonna be even less perfect. Um, you have to have the perfect house, the greatest car, the best paying job. And God's like, no, that's not what I want. Not in the least. I want all of it just the way it is. Unfinished, unkept, sometimes dirty, sometimes messy, sometimes a wreck. He wants that. Not the fake, the real. And the reason for that is if we're fake with God, how can you be real? How can you receive healing if you give him fakeness, but you want real results? How can you be delivered if you give him semi-serious, semi but you want the real deliverance? In fact, you can't receive real deliverance if you're not willing to admit it and want it yourself. So some of the things I wanted to bring in this is the place of sacrifice. The altar is like the ultimate sacrifice that us as believers in Christ come to. Christ's altar was his sacrifice on the cross. He was on a tr hung on a tree for you, well, for me and for you, or for you and for me. Um, and the idea of this is to help us understand that sacrifice is not easy, it's not funny, it's not fair, it's not pretty. And as we grow in our faith and we allow God to grow us in that faith, we learn that pretty is not necessary. Fancy is not necessary. In fact, if you bring the humble, he'll make it fancy, pretty, and beautiful. So, one of the things I wanted to point out about this is the fact that, like I said earlier, it's the uncut stone. So what does that uncut stone mean? That uncut stone means that you haven't tampered with it. You haven't done anything to alter the original state of it. And God says, bring that, bring that original state, bring how you feel, bring what you're thinking of, bring what's hurting your heart, bring what is burdening your shoulders, bring what he has for you. And what he has for you is in the surrendering of your uncut, original, messy, jacked up from the floor up, that, that's what he wants. He wants the 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 thing that you're holding on to because it's just too painful or you don't know what happened and you don't know my heart and you don't know how it hurts but he does and he wants that he wants that uncut that unadulterated that unmessed with stone heart mind spirit he wants that bring it to the altar and lay it down. Maybe? He wants it humble. You know, when we cry, you know how you get that ugly cry going, and you're like, and the little snot's coming down your nose, and the, your eyes are like bloodshot red, and they're swollen, and the, your eyelashes are all clumped together. Yeah, that kind of cry. That cry is not pretty. That cry is the most genuine moment you're having in that instant. And that's what he wants. He wants that genuine moment in every day of our life. And I'm not saying we're gonna cry every day, but every day, if we present the genuine, God is going to work out such a beautiful thing in us. David, King David, um, went through a trial in that he put himself in God's, God's wrath. And he did that because he decided to number the people. It's a long story. If you want to read it, you can find it in 2 Samuel chapter 24. But at the very end of that chapter, God told him here, what do you want to do? Do you want to fall into the hands of God? Do you want to fall into the hands of men? And and he gave him another choice, what I'm not remembering at the moment. But he chose to fall into the hands of a living God because he felt it would be safer for him there 
than to fall into the hands of man. Because you know man can be really trifling. I'm just saying, especially like when Christ was at, at Pilate's hands. He said, do you want Christ, Jesus, or Barabbas? What did the people say? Barabbas. So let's go back to our story. In chapter 24 of 2 Samuel, verse 24, he was at the threshing floor of Aruna, which was a Jebusite. And the Jebusite was like, look, you're the king, you rule, you reign, I'm going to give you everything. You can have the threshing floor, you can have the oxen, you can have everything you need. Just do what you got to do, king, because I'm your servant and here I am to serve you. And David said, no, no, no. I will not give God something that did not cost me. And the verse sim simply says, no, but I will buy it from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God. There goes that thing again, that statement, the Lord my God, that cost me nothing. And sometimes it's going to cost us, ladies. Let's be real. The cost is real. The battle is real. The scars are real. The blood is real. The pain is real. But he says, joy comes in the morning. It doesn't mean that you're going to be in pain always. Um, some of the patriarchs of our faith all built altars. Like Abraham built four. That's why they call him the father, the faith, father of the faith because he built four altars and in each altar, he was demonstrating his faith in God to bring him through and to deliver on that word that he spoke to him. Noah, after the flood, built an altar. Jacob built an altar. Moses built several altars. <laughs> Samuel built an altar. David, like we just spoke about, built an altar. Elijah, like we spoke about in our last message, he built an altar as well. And the, the thing that they all have in common is that altar. And the altar is the representation of death, sacrifice, and how we give it all to him. And so this afternoon, I want to bring forth the second part of this, and that is the burnt offering. And you might be saying, well, Tita, how does the burnt offering have to do anything with the altar? Everything. And the reason for that is because you couldn't have a sacrifice without the burnt offering, without the oxen or the dove or the chicken or the or whatever animal you they used back then. Now, granted, you and I, we don't sacrifice like that anymore. They would call the PETA people on us. But the sacrifice that you, you and I are going to make is the sacrifice of self sacrifice of your will the sacrifice of your emotions the sacrifice of me myself and I the sacrifice of this is what I want and God is saying listen those animals that were sacrificed to me they didn't want to die they didn't want to be cut up and have their blood spilled so that the people's sin could be forgiven what makes you think those animals wanted that? They didn't want that. Jesus didn't want it. Look at the prayer in Gethsemane. He, he really was struggling with that. And at the very end, he said, but not my will, thine. And so this afternoon, I want to invite you that you be like Jesus, that we be like Jesus. And we say, not our will, but thine. That we freely give ourselves completely to who God is and what he is requiring of us. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, which is one of my favorite verses, and I'm always going back to it because it speaks such, such truth and volumes of it. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, I wonder where we've heard that before. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And it also says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Be transformed by his presence. Be transformed by the reading of the word and the studying of the word and the being in his presence 
I invite you. Yes, it's not going to be easy. I find myself battling daily. But here I am. Doing things that make me uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't like, I like taking pictures. I don't like videos. But God is in control of all things. And this afternoon, I invite you. Knowing that he says nothing can separate us from his love. That we let we present ourselves a living sacrifice to him. That we knowing that the reality is, is that this does not want to be sacrificed. This does not want to give up its own will. This does not want to get sacrificed. But he calls us to it. So join us. Join me. Help us get closer to God through your prayers, through your repentance, through your submission to what he has called you to do. And you know what he's called you to do. Join me in prayer right now. Father God, we come to you this afternoon and we submit our hearts to you, our minds, our wills, our emotions, and our souls. We ask that you use us and that you help us to completely get closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You have an amazing weekend. I'm going to the Spartan race this Saturday, so pray for me.